The year is 1988. Canadians would re-elect Brian Mulroney as Prime Minister. All rail service in Newfoundland would be terminated after Terra Transport, a subsidiary of CN Rails, abandoned its rail lines on the island. And a new channel would begin the broadcast in Canada, airing programs directed towards children and young teenagers. This channel would be named YTV. Now let's go to 2023, where YTV is one of the most known youth television channels in Canada. As of 2013, YTV is in 11 million Canadian households, which is about 29% of the Canadian population. So as requested by these people on screen, this is the history of Canadian youth television channel YTV. Before I do get into this video, if you want to, please subscribe to this channel. I sometimes record these videos, and I like you to subscribe, but again, you don't have to. Also, I have a Discord server if you want to suggest the video idea, want to just chill, or be notified when their videos and tweets, then join the server. Link is in the description below. Also, if you notice anything's wrong in this video, then let me know either in the comments or on Twitter. Anyways, let's get into this video. The story of YTV starts in 1987, when in December 1987, a television license that was requested by Rogers Cable and CUC Broadcasting for a channel called YTV was approved by the CRTC. The channel would launch almost a year later on September 1st, 1988. The first program aired was a special party celebrating the launch of YTV. YTV was devoted to programming for children, both preschoolers and those already in the school system. This would show up with its programming. Airing shows for preschoolers like Alphabet Soup, Giggle Snorts Hotel, and Tickle on the Tum. And for non-preschoolers, Ghostbusters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and He-Man. The ownership percentage at launch was 75% held by Rogers and 25% held by CUC. In 1991, YTV would launch the After School Zone. Its first host would be Hamilton, Ontario actor Gordon Wolvet or as called in the programming block, Gord the PG Man. In 1992, the Grogs, a Canadian puppet group, would join the program Jockeys on the After School Zone, and in 1993, the After School Zone would rename to Just The Zone. In 1994, a separate programming block for YTV's preschool programming called The Treehouse would launch. Now remember the ownership percentages from 1988? Well, now it's 66% held by Rogers and 34% held by CUC. This is important because in 1995, Shaw Communications would acquire CUC's ownership of YTV. Also in 1995, YTV would launch the Prefix Zone, a programming block that aired on weekday mornings. It was rebranded to the B Zone in 1996 before shutting down in 1998. Also in 1995, YTV.com would be registered and it launched in between 1995 and 1997, going based off the Wayback Machine, the earliest save of YTV's website was 1997. In 1997, a preschool-oriented television channel from YTV called Treehouse TV would launch. In 1998, Shock Communications acquired Rogers' remaining percentage of YTV, gaining full ownership of the channel. Also in 1998, the Treehouse would become YTV Jr. Also in 1998, YTV began to use a Nickelodeon-style gross-out factor in its branding, adopting the slogan, Keep It Weird, having commercials often focus on promoting the brand through crude humor, and having the on-air logos feature the YTV text that have various bizarre and imaginative creatures be behind the YTV text. In 1999, YTV launched Wall Magazine. Also in 1999, Shaw spun all of its media assets slash properties into a separate company called Chorus Entertainment, meaning Chorus now owned YTV. Also in 1999, YTV Jr. will lose an hour of airtime, going from 6.5 hours to 5.5 hours. In 2000, YTV launched Limbo, a late night block running from 9pm to 12am and later running from 1am to 5am. The block would end in 2001. In 2001, YTV launched another block called Vortex, which is a block oriented towards action cartoons such as Sonic X, Hi Hi Puffy, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In 2002, the YTV Junior block would come to an end. In 2004, YTV would launch another late night block called Bionix, which primarily featured acquired Japanese anime series aimed at a mature audience such as Death Note and Bleach. It also contained Western anime shows such as Futurama and Samurai Jack, as well as live action series and movies. 
In 2005, YTV launched yet another block called ZapX Movies. The block would air family-friendly movies. Also in 2005, Chorus partnered with Comcast to launch a cable video on-demand service called Vortex On Demand in the United States, containing animated shows from the Nirvana Library. In 2006, a post-6 p.m. advertising style would be developed for older audiences, using a more simpler logo and sleeker packaging with reduced gross-out factors. Also in 2006, YTV launched Crunch, a weekend block to replace Vortex, which shut down around a month earlier. It also replaced The Zone's Summer Weekends, which temporarily replaced Vortex following the block ending. Also in 2006, the YTV main YouTube channel was created. In 2007, the 2006 style change would go for the whole channel instead of past 6 p.m. Also in 2007, Vortex On Demand was discontinued. In 2008, YTV would make a block called Nickelodeon Sundays, airing on Sunday mornings from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And if you couldn't guess her name, it aired live-action animated content from Nickelodeon. The block would end in June of 2009. Also in 2008, the CRTC approved Chorus's request to launch a specialty channel called YTV One World, described as featuring programming from around the world targeting children ages 6 to 17 and their family. The schedule would include programs devoted to entertainment, humor, travel, games, and science and technology. Also in 2008, Chorus began offering a video on demand service called Bionics on Demand to Canadian cable providers. Only Rogers and Shaw offered the service. The server had older and new animated programs that didn't air on YTV. The service was discontinued in December 2009 and was replaced by YTV On Demand. In September 2009, Chorus reached an agreement with MTV Networks to launch Nickelodeon in Canada. Also in September 2009, YTV's logo was changed slightly to have featured new colors. The background was simplified, bumpers were reduced, and later replaced by opaque digital on-screen graphics telling viewers which programs are coming next and promotions of the programs. In November of 2009, Nickelodeon Canada would launch using the YTV One World license. In 2010, ZapX Movies would come to an end. Also in 2010, YTV Playtime, another preschool-oriented block, would launch. Also in 2010, YTV and the Magazine would make a follow-up quarterly magazine to Wall. It would be published between 2010 and 2012. In 2011, Wall Magazine ceased publication. Also in 2011, an HD feed of YTV would launch. Also in 2011, Big Fun Movies, a family-friendly movie block, would launch. In 2012, YTV Playtime ended. In 2013, Crunch came to an end and was replaced with The Zone Weekend the following week. In 2014, YTV underwent a brand refresh with new graphics and bumps. In addition, the channel updated its logo by having it face upwards to the left instead of facing directly to the audience. In 2015, a YouTube channel called Novana Retro would launch, containing various productions by Novana, past Nickelodeon series, YTV channel promos, and YTV original series. In 2016, Novana Retro was renamed to YTV Direct. In 2017, the first known video on YTV's main channel, Mermaid Con Camera Zone on the Road, was uploaded. In 2018, YTV Direct would be renamed to Keep It Weird, which is what the channel is called today. In 2019, Stack TV launched with YTV being one of the first channels on there. In 2021, Fam Fun would launch as a programming block on YTV. And after this, I can't find any more info on YTV. If you want to suggest anything that I forgot to add, then suggest it in the comments or on Twitter. But anyways, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to. Again, you don't have to, but I'd appreciate it. Join the Discord if you want to. And until I upload again, later.